What is going on everyone? We are off Palm Beach, Florida right now. We got Blue Gabe at the wheel and we have Lauren and Aubrey, which Aubrey is Gabe's brother and Lauren is his daughter and they're down on tank right now, right under that buoy. They should be surfacing any minute now. They've been down for a while. Next up is myself and Blue Gabe. You so, know what, babe? I'm not near as good at you as. What? When I'm doing my intro and you're in the background doing stuff, I just tried to do it to you, but I was so awkward. <laughs> <laughs> That's because I know what you're going to say. Like, what's up, everybody? So then I can mock you very easily. You never know what I'm going to say. I'm just random every time I do any intro. Oh, they're coming up right now. We're about to get a report from down at the bottom. It looks like the current is ripping. That was a nice dive. Saw some nice buttons. Saw several nice hogs but just none of them were the fish we were looking for. But beautiful viz, tons of life on the bottom. Beautiful. Ooh. Better viz than the other day? No thermocline, and the viz was at least 50 or 60 feet, which is about 10 times better than it was last dive. It was like, oh my word. It was a world-class pair of fish. Charging into us and well, turned over the ledge, and I was like, What? But is like, totally, that? they act like hogfish. It did. And it was like reddish, and I just looked up to see this giant, and I was like, Oh my word. It's free for school. Oh, let me see. Oh, go for it, Charlie. Wait, 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 wait for him, wait for him. Give him a second. Okay, go. Hey, what's up everybody? When you're fishing, it's critical to go to where the fish are. And you can see we've got a few waypoints to choose from when we're diving. Okay, now not everyone has a dad and brothers who have spent literally thousands of hours offshore finding spots. Fish Rules wants you to be successful, so check it out. Go to Fish Rules, hit the Maps button, and I've got the Pirates map on because I think it's pretty cool. And if we zoom in, I've also got our artificial reef locations on. All of these dots are artificial reefs. All of these dots are places where you will, if you go fish these, if you go dive these, you will find fish. 
and you will catch and spear more fish. So to get there, you go into menu and pro features. You hit pro features and you become a pro staff member. You will have the artificial reefs. Then you go down to maps. You come here and you turn on the artificial reefs. You navigate those artificial reefs, whether you're scuba diving, whether you're fishing, if you're fishing with kids, if you're fishing with your buddies, you will catch more fish fishing those artificial reefs. Download Fish Rules app, grab the pro subscription, check those artificial reefs out in your area. You'll be surprised what you catch. No! I don't think my flapper engaged. Because there's a nice chunk of meat on the flapper, but it wasn't stuck up. So well. Anything else? No, I think that dive boat had just dove this. All the lionfish were tucked way back in the hole. There we go. We gone.
<laughs> Look at that. <clears throat> Looks like Aubrey or Lauren just sent up a big old hogfish. Maybe it was the one I missed. Or that came off my shaft. Look at that joker. I'd say he got a nice headshot on him. Dang, that's a pretty fish. Let's see who shot that hogfish. They're coming up now. Lauren pulled a me yesterday. She went to go dive in the water and didn't have any weights. Oh! Woo! Hogs were bogo cool. down there! That's awesome. Who shot the other one? I got the first one. This is Dad's, but his tore off, so I had to clean up his mess. <laughs> good job. Here, I'll just throw it in. I don't oh, yeah, yeah, you're good. Is he still alive, kicking? Nice hog. How do they say? Clean up on all 10. Clean up on all 10. <laughs> Everything's in. All right, we got to pull the gear in the boat. Hey, there's a high five, and then there's a hog five. Take two. You ever have such a good dive, you come up and you just want to hog five your dive buddy? Are they bragging? They are a little bit. <laughs>
with the good old Bill Rife. That's yeah. funny because we were just having that conversation between a Rife and a Koa. <laughs> well, I shot the Koa, missed, shot hers, got the fish, and then I shot at a sheep head but missed, and then we had to go up. So I was just getting the hang of it too and when we had to go up. That's just how it is though. Up hold up, hold up, hold up, everybody. Hold up, everybody. When you watch my most recent video, you will hear Kelly Young pipe up and tell me that I'm wrong and she's right. Her gun doesn't shoot high. Koas don't shoot high. I never said that. Let's just play a clip of all her misses real quick. Okay, Jake. It's all right because my, my spear gun has been at your house for 10 months. So that's why it shoots high now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, I, I, there was a school of amberjack that first came down when we first dove down. Well, it was, it was just like, the this, one. This, this. It was one. Oh, it was oh, the sorry, one. Yes, sorry. yeah. Okay? It was yeah. one amberjack. It was one legal one and two small banded like, rudder fish. Yeah. Sorry, that piece. Uh, I figured it was going to break when I put it in the bag. <laughs> Catch of the day right here, baby. <laughs> just laying on the bottom. He almost got away from me, though. Did you shoot high at it? No, that the rife Look, got that one. This one got, the rife got this one. <laughs> I told this you. This fish hid from me like seven times. I'm like, just come out and let me shoot you. <laughs> I so, told you that little rife has speared more fish than any gun gonna, I know. Give the gun some credit too. <laughs> <laughs> Pink string and all, Kelly. Pink string and all. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, you guys. We are back at Aubrey's house, and we are gonna play up some fish. Unfortunately, my hog came off. Better luck next time. That is my second hog fish I shot and came off. The first one was in the Bahamas on a pole spear, second one off Palm Beach, but I will get one one day. Fortunately, Aubrey and Lauren got two honker hogs and I shot a nice mangrove snapper last minute of the last dive. So let's go ahead and flay up one of these hogfish and the mangrove. Mm. I like these uh, ice packs we got going on here. That's exactly the same fish you shot. Same size and everything. When I shot mine. Oh, no, no, no. Yours is in there. <laughs> or not yours, but that's where you hit him and everything. Yeah. So the first hogfish I shot at, literally exact same shot. When he, when Aubrey uh, put him up to the surface, I, me and Gabe were kind of like, wait, is that the fish I just shot? We're doing the math in our head. We're like, no way. That's the only shot there is. But... Show him where it had been shot before. Oh, yeah. See this little scar Pulling back right here? Out that, shape. that little bump right there? You can see someone shot him here and it ripped out. That's probably the one you shot in the Bahamas. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty close. He traveled and made his way back to Palm Beach. Okay, so since I only have one mangrove snapper, I'm gonna go ahead and make him whole. I like to do this if I have, say, smaller fish or maybe not a lot of fish. So we're gonna go ahead and descale him because you don't want to be eating any scales when you're cooking a fish whole. I just have a lobster gauge that I'm using right here. You can also use the back of a knife. You just got to be careful or a spoon if you don't have a actual descaler. And you got to be careful when you're descaling against the scales that you don't poke yourself right here. Make sure you get under that belly, under that tail. And it gets messy. So, if you ever descaling fish, I wouldn't advise it doing it in a kitchen or a kitchen sink. I would do it outside. It's where you can hose away the scales. There we go, that's one side. You're gonna do both sides, and then as well, you're going to take the gills out. Now, I did bleed this fish out after I shot it when I was in the water. One, to get it to stop moving around because I did not stone him. And two, I like bleeding out my fish because I think it makes the meat better. I like to wear gloves when I do this just so I can get a good grip on the gills and the guts and pull them right out. You scale the other side. It is hot out here. The past like three weeks here in Florida 
has been raining and windy all day every day. This week, it's been absolutely gorgeous. But we do have a tropical storm coming our way. Did they name it yet? Do you know? I don't know. I've just been looking at it on the radar. Yeah. It's just a big storm. I don't know if it's officially a tropical storm yet or not. Oh, it's been a tropical storm. Oh, it has been? I it's on it's... Cuba right now. Mm. We're supposed to be going to the Keys later this week, too. So we're just waiting out the storm. All right, step one, descaling, getting rid of the gills. Next step, most important step, gut the fish. Let's go over here. I just stick the end of my knife tip in his little anal area. Where'd you get that Bowie knife? A fan sent it to us in our P.O. box, so shout out whoever sent us this awesome fillet knife. I'll be putting it to good use. There we go. Mm. All right. Just get a good old grip on them guts and just rip them right out. Might get a little messy. fish. It's a good size mangrove too. Any small snapper I love cooking whole because the filet is so small anyway. I find it very satisfying to pick the meat off the bones. Hose them out. <laughs> oh my gosh I'm trying to think. You guys ever seen the TV show Blue Mountain State? They're going in for their drug test and I forget the word they use. I wish I could remember it right now because this is what it's reminding me of. All right, just like that, this fish is ready to go in the oven or on the grill. Guess what I got to do though? What? I got to clean mine from the other day. Oh, you didn't even clean that yet? Listen, who's bigger? <laughs> So we got two logfish, we couldn't help but to take a little filet. Beautiful, beautiful meat. One of my favorite fish to eat, especially in ceviche. If you guys watch my channel and Blue Gabe's channel, you know I love ceviche. Ceviche, ceviche. The table is a bit slippery, not gonna lie though. We did let them have the entire grouper the other day. Ooh, that is true. Mm-hmm. So we can take a little bit of hog. Look at that. Look at that piece right there. Mm. I don't know what I'm gonna do with this yet, but it's gonna be good. It's gonna be going in my belly. It's gonna be going in our bellies. No, you gotta eat that mangrove. Uh-uh. I need to, listen, I need to eat the hogfish to land the hogfish. So I think if I eat the hogfish, next time I shoot it, I will land it. I need a coffee. All right, you guys, we are back in the kitchen. We have our whole mangrove snapper here. Now, normally my go-to for whole fish is butter, olive oil, garlic, lemon, onions. But today I'm gonna do something a little different. I have this jam here. It's orange ginger pepper jelly jam. And I got it in Georgia when myself, Blue Gabe, and the kids were in Georgia a while ago. I wanna say November, but I'm not sure. I got it at this really cool pecan store and it's made for like red meats, but it says you can make it hold on, on. Hold on, hold on, let me see, right? Did you start growing scales? Do I have a scale on there? <laughs> Listen, there was... I thought you showered. Where is it? <laughs> it just fell. It did? There was like three scales near the head and I took them off and I must have put my hair behind my ear. That's funny. Okay, so um, another thing you can do, you don't have to do it, but you can. You know their little spikies on top of their dorsal fin right here? Yeah, those. You can cut those right off. That way they don't poke any holes in your foil. Did you have to use my good scissors I just bought though? Oh, the ones that I bought because your Danko scissors were lost? Yes, who I did. Who lost them? You. No, just kidding. They're in the shed actually. Ooh. Babe, I, I can add this to your collection. Hold up. 
I'm doing something with that. I don't care if I got to take it to oh. somebody. I'm doing. <laughs> I'm so proud of that. This is a tail of a lionfish. Nothing. He just cut it off and just patted it dry with paper towels, and that's it. So cool. Blue Gabe got inspired. Hold it up like this one time. Blue Gabe got inspired in the dive shop because and I've seen people make earrings out of these. It's kind of cool. Really fragile though. But we don't know, really know what we're going to do with it yet. But now you have a cool like mohawk looking mangrove stabber one. Oh, uh, there's some pokies down here too. We can go ahead and take those off. Our oven is so loud. Uh, it's the only oven I've ever heard that blows out, like makes that noise. Oh, you got it on convection day. Mm. We're trying to speed up the process here. Dang, that anal fin is in. Hold up, I might need to do some extensive work here. Holy moly. This thing is like not playing around. Let a, let a man take over. Put that big knife right where it needs to go. Put it on there. Right here. <laughs> Dang, mangrove snapper. Ah. Oh. Dang. That thing is a straight up, like, the hardest toothpick in the world. Holy moly. All right, back on the foil you go. <laughs> because now I like really, because my foil's kind of not small. Whoa, 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 whoa. Put, whoa. That, put that over there. Adding it to the pile there. Yeah, I don't want this or this. <laughs> you can have that. I want these. We're going to have a tail collection going on here. I should have cut it a little better for you. My bad. I'll shoot another one for you. Took a lot of skill. You're going to make <clears throat> some slices in the meat that way whatever you dress your fish with sauces mayonnaise butter seasonings you get that stuff dripping down in the meat on bigger fish what you can do is instead of just doing like three lines you can kind of make like a tic-tac-toe board on the side of the fish all right, now for the cool part. I'm so excited. I've never put jelly. You smell it. It smells. I, okay, listen. It smells. It smells not bad. Are you done? <laughs> listen, I know. I smelled it first, and then I tasted it, and it's not bad. It tastes really good. I don't know why it smells like that. It's the pepper. There's pepper in this, by the way. I know it smells terrible, but it's actually really tasty. You know, it's like blue cheese. People I'm glad I hijacked a piece of hogfish to eat. I do have the hogfish in there. Look at that. Mm -hmm. Golly, listen, I can't get over that listen, smell. Don't, don't smell things. It, you always smell things before you eat it. No, you don't. Yes, you do. No, you don't. We're just going to put it on one side. Because... The sauce is going to drip. I'm going to put it, oh, I'm going to use the same spoon. Did y'all see that right there? What? The jelly? You going to look it up? No. We're going to put some in his belly, too. He's going to be, his belly is going to be full of jelly. See that throat? See how much meat is on that throat? A lot of people don't know after you fillet a fish, there's a lot of meat still left on the fish. The cheeks, the top of the head, and the throat. Smaller fish, I mean obviously it's not gonna be as much meat, but when you're filleting like gag groupers, big hogs, cuberas, mutton snappers, there's a lot more meat left on the carcass after you do a basic fillet. That's all I'm adding. I, was, I don't know if I'm gonna add onion. I think I'm just gonna let the jelly do its thing. I'm going to wrap this baby up. Oh no, I poked the hole in it. I'll put some foil over. I'm excited. You know how you use kimchi sauce on your fish? I think it's going to be very similar. I had more kimchi in there if you needed something that tasted good. Listen. I don't know if I'm going to 
know why it smells so bad, but it's not that bad. Did you check the expiration date? Yes. Says the, the guy who, I'm like, listen, I was cleaning out the fridge the other day. And Condiments like, don't go bad that are in the refrigerator. In 2017? <laughs> they just get better. It's like wine. <laughs> Same with milk? Yeah. It's crazy. You ready? We're going to pop this baby in the oven. Goes by that. Probably 10, 15 minutes. I'm going to check it in about 10 minutes. See these? See these mitts right here? These are my blue game boxing gloves. Hot pocket. Hot pocket. Yum. Just to think that this fish was swimming on the reef. Minding, minding his, his own, own business. business. <laughs> that's <laughs> that was good, that was good. And then I came up and went Dong! and shot him and now he's dinner. All right, here it goes. Should I get some skin in there too? I love the skin. Mm. Look at that. I can't do it. I'm not doing the skin. I guess I have to. I'm just trying not to get a bone. Okay, there we go. The jam is peppery. Okay. Let me taste it again. Hold up. It's not bad. It wouldn't be my first choice, but it's definitely edible. It's no kimchi sauce. Let me see this. But it's not, it's Let not terrible. This. Oh, I gotta sneeze. Oh, that's really peppery, so. Ew! Ooh. Only once? Ew! You got it? Now. Only twice? Usually you sneeze like five times. It's different. It's, it's not really to my like, like it's not bad. It's just different. I like more garlic and salt. Too salt. Too salt. That's a big old chunk of hunk. Don't smell it. It's probably it's definitely better than it smells. Yeah, a hundred percent. I got one little bone. It just sounds orange ginger pepper jelly. It just, just needs salt. Yeah, like it's not bad. I probably wouldn't like make it again. Mangroves are so good though. But the fish is really good. I do have some salt right here. This is some really, it's a, actually the salt I love, but I mean, it's a little chunky for a little fish, but uh, a little sprinkled ankle right there. It's what's for dinner. So overall, it's not terrible. It's definitely edible. It's not bad, but it's definitely like an acquired taste. I think like a really peppery, sweet jam like that. It's not bad, but it's not the best. But I did make some sweet potatoes. We got a little salad over there too. And we got a big old filet of hog snapper in the fridge. I was gonna make something with hog snapper, but I'm gonna save it for another video because we're going down to the Keys, maybe tomorrow or the end of this week. We're kind of waiting on the storm and seeing what it's going to do right now. It's pouring, raining outside, as you guys can see the radar. Can I tell you what is good? What? What's in that cup? What's that Tito's? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I want to show oh, the radar. the radar. Where's my phone? Yeah. I took a strange shot when it was pouring down earlier. That's what we got coming at us right there. Mm-hmm. This is Miami and that's us. It's been like this for like two and a half weeks. Oh, so we've been trying to survive. But right now we are ending this video. Thanks for watching guys. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. Hit a thumbs up if you like the video. Leave a positive comment below. Be sure to check out Blue Gobby's channel as well. And I will see y'all next time. See ya.